Yeah. 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 Good catch, Alda. Mm -hmm. right. Good evening, everyone. So we're going to be discussing about Earth gods and goddesses tonight. So we'll start with the Greek, Roman, and then we'll go into some of the little bit more specific ones, like uh, Samoan, uh, Nordic. We've also got more Germanic. So starting with Gaia, uh, next slide. So Gaia is one of the primordial goddess, goddesses for the Greek. And she was the partner of Uranus, the sky god, mother to many of the gods and goddesses such as Zeus, Poseidon, and was involved in many of the struggles. So she was a common goddess that was involved with the struggles between Zeus and, if I remember right, it was Zeus, Kronos, and then later on, she sided against Zeus with Poseidon and Athena. <clears throat> she is mentioned as a divine being in the Homeric poems in that black sheep were sacrificed to her and that she was called upon by many who were taking oaths during this era. And you would find that also in a lot of the writings at the time. Because if I remember right... Trying to think which one it was, whether it was Odysseus or trying to think which one it was that actually had it where they talked about the oath taking in the name of Gaia during that time frame. And a Greek, a Greek epic stated, Verily at first chaos came to be, but next, but next wide bosomed Gaia, the ever sure foundation of all the deathless ones who hold the peak of Olympus and dim Tartaros, fairest among the deathless gods, who unnerve the limbs and overcome the mind, and wise counsel of all gods and of all men. She was also said to be the first oracle of Delphi, and sometime warned of the prophecies that she had received. She was also well known for her role as the mother of all, nurture giver, as well as a provider, such as giving fruit, flowers, grass, rain, and the stars. She was a powerful goddess, was not afraid to go against many of the other gods and goddesses, such as Uranus, Kronos, Zeus, or whoever else has challenged her throughout the ages. Some of the common symbols that were related to her, or is linked to her, is the serpent, the bull, the pig, bees, some crystals said to represent her are jasper, chrysolonite, and cassian quartz. Uh, next slide, please. Now, for the Roman version, so you have the Greek with Gaia, and then the Romans had a very similar one during that time frame. And depending on the time frame, also depending on the name, they had Telusmater and then Terramater. And the difference between the naming was that during the Free Roman Empire, they go by Telusmater. And then during the times of the Roman Empire, in the later part of the empire, then they went to Terramater. Sorry, Terramater. And she was commonly known as the goddess of the earth, goddess of agriculture, the earth, earthquakes, marriage, and fertility. Now, some of the most common symbols that you would find attributed to her was the cornucopia, which is a bunch of flowers or fruits, depending on the image that was used for it. She was honored with, she was commonly celebrated with festivals related to agriculture, and was also in relation to Ceres. And the name of the most common festival that was she was honored at was Sementeve, and also was honored at the festival of Fordicia, which pertained to fertility and animal husbandry. Some of the rites that she would have been called forth in would have been a birth of a child or in, at weddings. And she was the Roman equivalent to Gaia. Now, the funny thing is, is that we also know for Earth that they use the tarot for Earth as well. So that's 
kind of the cool thing with that. Uh, the next slide, please. Okay, now this was a fun one. So now we know how in Rome and Greece that it was goddesses. Now we get to the Egyptians and it's a god. So we got Jeb or Geb. Geb. The MLS, so the most common story that Geb is found to be related to is a goose that was said to lay an egg that was the creation of Earth. That was one of the origin stories that Geb is related to. The other one they had was that, let me see where I had it. The other version that they had was that there was the union of Geb and Nut, and that upon the separation of Geb and Nut from, by their father resulted in the earth and the sky. And some names that you would hear for Geb is that he was a great cackler, which may be in relation to the connection with the goose or the great egg origin story. And he was also known as the father of snakes. So commonly you'll see him either symbolized with snakes, with the goose. Do you need that? The first that's interesting. Chicken and the egg. A cosmic egg instead of the golden egg. That's what it's called the light. That's interesting. Yeah. So that was the cool thing I found with that one. But it was a goose that actually. Yeah, it was, it was, it was a female. <laughs> it, depends, it, depends on, it depends on the story because they had two different versions of it. One connected them to the goose that laid the earth as one of the stories. And then the other one was the common, more common, like how the Greeks and the Romans had it, where it was him and another god or goddess. But he had nothing. And they were split. And birth to the earth, earth and the yeah, sky. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that Egyptian oh, pantheon gets like really. Yeah. 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 So the Egyptian it's more, the Egyptian, it's more interesting. It does because once you people are used to getting to like Greek, Roman, etc., where they more or less stay in the same figure. But from what I understand, doing the research, especially you know because I follow Boston and everything. Egyptians have this weird thing where they have a like compound deities now, depending on their situation or circumstance, they'll actually have like bots and then through anger or justice takes a new form and then a new personality to be worshipped in that aspect. Also, it's like, okay, and it goes sometimes three or four, and it's like, okay, it's happening now. And there's also the fact that a lot of these ones, like we saw with the Greek and the Romans as well, and the Egyptians had it, is that, for example, for Geb, yeah. is that you'll see that then they have their children that also takes on some of the roles that he had as well. Mm -hmm. Kind of like how with the Greeks and the uh, Romans, they have Athena and then they had the Roman equivalent and a bunch of other ones that took like, for example, more of the agriculture and the fertility roles as you go further along. Yeah. It's... Uh, next slide, please. Now, the next one that we've got coming up is for so this is for Sumeria. So it's Kai. So Sumerian goddess of the earth. And the common, most common symbol for her is the iris. Huh. And through her marriage with her son Elil, the god of air, and through their union, that was how about the plants and animals came about the earth. And then further along, as time went on, from what they're, so from what I found from researching was that as the cultures began to change and along came Babylon, she became the goddess Antu in Babylon. And there wasn't much information on the, there wasn't too much information for her since a lot of the information for that would have been more passed on by word of mouth. Beyond the creation of the earth, how that occurred, and that she was a consort of Anu, the heavens, or the sky god. But other than that, that's all the information, unfortunately, that we have for Samaria. Uh, next slide, please. Now, this one was interesting. So for Prithvi, there's a couple different versions depending on whether we're going by the Buddhist. It was the Buddhist. There was a Indian version more focusing on 
other cultures within India. And then there was more of the Hindu, which, which also went into it as well. Now, across the board for it, considered the mother goddess and the personification of the earth, and depending on whether it's the Indian, Hindu, or the Buddhist texts, who she had the partner of, as well as what she was the goddess of, was dependent on which, which text you're reading. So, for example, for the Sanskrit translation, it has her name as the vast one, and the name for the earth in Sanskrit was Prithvi Mata, in the Venice, she is the concert of Dias Pita, Father Sky, and is dynamically linked together. And then for the Puranic equivalent, she is the is Buh, Buh, we mispronounce this one. Bohemi? Or he, it depends on if they pronounce the uh, B. It might be Humi. And it was the concert of Varaha. And then in the Buddhist text, she is seen as a protector of Brahma Buddha and was said to have see, seen his final enlightenment. So, depending on the text that you read, there's a little bit of variation between them. But the big thing that they had there was that she was the mother goddess. And then, depending on the culture, who she was linked to partnership had very similar roles as the father or like the sky father or the father of the heavens or similar naming or as it was in the hindu text she was connected she was connected to one of the faces of vishnu or one sorry the avatar of vishnu was how they had it labeled for that uh, next yeah, slide, yeah, yeah, it's yeah, yeah right. The bottom of the structure, yeah, that's an earth and sky going on, yeah. Now, this one was interesting. So, this one was fun for the research that I was finding out for, for Moss Mokosh. So, this is the Slavic goddess, goddess of earth, fertility, fate, harvest, moisture, women, children, and of the home. She was the goddess of the ancient Slavs and is said to have a connection to the thunder god Perun. She was the only female deity that had an idol set up by Vladimir the Great, which was pretty big honor to have a place because, for example, he would have Puron, and then he had a couple of the other gods that were also there, and then they had her as the only goddess among them. And she was worshipped also as the goddess of fertility and ruler of death. And what you would see is as the Orthodox Church moved throughout the region, is that you can still find her, you can still find like worship worshippers of her throughout like the rural areas and the villages. But as the Orthodox moved in, that's when the culture kind of changed to more of in the areas that were untouched. I think that it might also be that so a lot of times these things happen i have no doubt that when the orthodox came in but i think it's history has shown us anything is that it would appear that they're leaving but they would find their way to get um information more underground they would you know you can't just very well tell people you've been worshiping this for how many centuries and all of a sudden orthodox comes in is they would be like okay well they would unperson orthodox would be hiring some like stone mason person like Without realizing they were worshiping such and such person. And they would not have common all their blessing, they would put a little one of their god symbols on the inside of the door and it'd be there forever yeah. and no one would notice it, except the worshippers would say, it, it, yeah. Like, haha, yeah. 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 The big yeah. thing that I saw on that, mm -hmm. the big thing I saw on that was that basically at that point, once the Orthodox Church came in, it was more bringing in the Virgin Mary. And, oh, yeah. yeah. And all that. Uh, next slide, please. That's it. Still in Earth, Thank you. Yes. The theme goes on. And then, now this one was interesting. So for the Samoan God, they have, um, I might mispronounce this, Tagaloa. Mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. Dr. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. Supreme ruler and creator of the universe, chief of all gods, made the land, seas, waters, trees, and people. It is mentioned how he created the islands of Samoa, Opalu, Fiji, and Savai from pieces of rock. And he had spread a vine between the islands. And so here's the story, the version that they have for him from that, humanity from that. So Palma's vines were worms, and from the worms came humanity. Yeah, <laughs> that, 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 that sounds, sounds like us now. <laughs> that makes sense. But, yeah, the Hawaiian, I think, the culture so is very, yeah. very different. Well, no, Samoan one Samoan. is very different. Yeah. Uh, Hawaiian culture is a conglomeration of those things. Okay, yeah, I that, see. That's not entirely correct, but there's more parts of those things in Hawaiian culture. These are original, these are pretty dated. Values. Yeah, this is true. And I think based on the information I have even for that, it's like it's very image-based, like like Pele. And the, the, the lava that you see everywhere, the, oh, that's part of Pele's hair. It's very much, you can see it physically and have like a, that image that's right there. The divine the just showing that all of these islands were connected. Yes. That's the, and all the people came from the vine. So basically all the, the story is that all the people came from that. All the people are the same. Doesn't matter what island they came from. Very nice. All the people are the same. And if you think about it, the version that they always show for Tagaloa is that the like you've seen how the guys for the Samoans are like very strong built and very yeah very, very like traditional shape yes yes very fit and that's the imagery that they show for him and then uh, next slide please. Now this one, now this one was cool because looking upon the culture. So Papa to Tanu, Tanuko, Papa Tanuko, Papa Tanuko. Who so they one of the nicknames that they have was just as Papa. She is the land. She is a mother Earth figure who gave birth to all things of the world and imparted many blessings to her children. So the version that they have for this is that she emerged from the, the water. She gave birth to all life and provided nourishment for all life she has created. And that all humans were born from her womb and then returned to her womb upon death. Now, what was interesting was when looking into the culture that it still continued through that the women had a lot more of a stronger role and that a lot of the decisions for the family went through the ladies for that. And that's why I thought was pretty cool is that in most of the ones, it's not just having a goddess that they worship, but they also attribute to the women of the culture as well that she's that they are representative of her. No, that's absolutely right. right. There's there have been cases more specifically, um, like cases of, of India or some of these goddesses are so venerated in worship but in actual practice you think that the females that are they would be treated less than that that you venerate and worship this goddess and that feminine divine but yet in actual practice the females are lower class so it's nice to know that they just put it in practice as well as through their their religion yeah but why did they have to call her papa <laughs> maybe because maybe yeah, that one pop was just like she was like, she was like, she was like maybe maybe because in the U like in English Papa means daddy but or like in Spanish means daddy but in other languages it means something completely different probably yeah it's probably something like she came from the head of the mountain or something yeah <laughs> like it means a, like Papa just Papa means a whole little sentence and then for this one for the creation of the world that she was separated from. Rangani, the sky god, and as a result, light out of darkness. It is, and then, like I was talking about with, for the women, is that the women's womb is considered similar to the womb of the earth, and it's bringing her a life, bringing her a life. And that respect for the earth and what blessings are given is shown in the way that respect is given to the earth. Because that was their big thing there is that not only is it that the women are in charge or have a much bigger role, but also they're very focused on keeping that environment maintained. 
Because if you look at the island there, you're going to see it way different from what you would find, like in some areas of the U.S. where it's all built out. But they got much bigger respect for the earth. Uh, next slide, please. Now, this one, this one we do not have as much information on. Now, for Yord, Yord is the personification of Earth and the goddess of Earth, fertility, and growth of the Norse. So she is the mother of Thor and a partner of Odin. And it was said that she may have also gone by the name of Jorgen, or I believe it's Jorgen. She is said to be a giantess, and that she was mentioned throughout Edic and Skaldic poetry, but unfortunately, not much of it remains to be able to give much more information. The next closest goddess that she's considered in relation to is Nerthus, which is the Germanic goddess. And thankfully, her history is, oh, sorry, uh, Carl, next slide, please. The nice thing is that thanks to to tax, tax, Tacitus, mm -hmm. that in the Germania brings up the not only the existence of Nerthus, but also discussed about the seven tribes and that she was known as Mother Earth and the goddess of the earth, prosperity and peace. And that one of the things that I found interesting from the research that I did was that what they found was that the seven tribes, there wasn't a ton of uniqueness or individuality about the seven tribes that was to be noted, at least in the section that they were talking about Nerthus, but that all seven tribes had the common worship of Nerthus, the Mother Earth, and that when she moved through the lands, or in this case, as the chariots moved through the lands, that there was peace throughout the seven tribes during those periods. And she has a secret temple grove that is in the Baltic Sea that a priest is said to be able to sense the presence of the goddess. And that her symbols are fire, chariot, and soil, and that the chariot that she rides in, or that the one that goes through the seven tribes, is driven by cows. <laughs> and it says that she can be linked to Yord, but this one's talking about the god of the sea and wind in Norse mythology. So they were saying that she could have been linked to a masculine version of Yord as well. Uh, next slide, please. Now, this one was interesting. So for this one, it's for a culture in Africa for Akan. So it has... Asase Ya or Asase Afwa. Now, for this one, what makes it interesting is depending on the cult, the area of the region for the culture, it goes by the two different names. Now, the difference between the two is that one culture has her seen as the younger version of the earth more of the maiden and more focus on the fertility and prosperity, the other culture sees her as the, the mother crone, the older, wiser, the older, wiser earth. And so the Asante believe that Ase Afwa was born on a Friday and is the younger version of the Mother Earth, while the the Twi believe that Asa Ya was born on a Thursday, and is the crone shown as an older woman, and is known as the Old Mother Earth. But either, by either name, she is the Akan goddess of fertility, love, procreation, peace, truth, and of the Earth. And 
Many tributes are made to her in her role as the goddess of fertility, peace, prosperity, and the earth. She was honored at the birth of the child, and that once the child was named, then they would lay the child down on a mat in honor of her. And then during the death burials, that gift sacrifices were given to get permission to bury the dead. And here's a little bit from a prayer poem that they had in relation to her. So it went on, old woman earth, she who lent the rights of cultivation to the living, my prayer to you of thanksgiving. And then it would go on and on, depending on what they're specifically asking for. So, for example, for the one on there, it was talking more of in relation to the asking for more of the prosperity and for abundance of the crops. But they would have different prayer poems or different prayers that they pray to her depending on what they're asking for. So, for example, for the funerals, they'd have different ones. If it's for childbirth, they'll have different ones. But it was pretty interesting because for that prayer poem, it had a good, I think, five or six paragraphs worth where it just went. Yeah, that, that stands to read. Like, yeah. A lot of that whole area of Africa you see there, and it's, you're absolutely right with the, with the research because if anyone has studied that whole African area, you got that whole white thing, and they have pretty much the almost a similar, like their faith and their religion is the same, but it's different. That makes it different. Like, it's one straight line, but in every little tiny pocket, there's going to be slight differences here and there sprinkled everywhere. So it's like they're still going to believe this, but then if we're here, it's going to be slightly different. So the poems that you're going to be getting are overall going to be the same, but there may be longer, different variations, and it's just simply a matter of here to here. So you're, yeah, you're right about that. Exactly, and it depends on which version, like the area of the culture, yeah. because one's focusing more on the older Mother Earth versus the younger, so they'll have a little bit different roles. Mm -hmm. And that was the interesting for this. So it's not like most of the other cultures where they just give one static image of the goddess but they have different ones depending on the area of the region they're in. Because if I remember right for this, one was for the dry earth, for the drier region, region of the area. The other one was for the wet or the more, the less barren region of the area. So that was the other difference is that one was for the dry earth, one was for the wet earth. Mm -hmm. uh, next slide. Uh, for the next one, so Etugan Eke, the Turkish goddess, she is said to have existed in the middle of the universe. She is the control of the natural, first, natural forces and the mother goddess of the earth. She was considered the patroness of the homeland of nature. She was considered second to Kok Tendri, Tengri, which he was another one of those gods that were similar to the sky god or the one that was considered the second, like the main god, like one of the main gods that were, that brought about the creation of the earth. And the people brought sacrifices in the spring as well as in the autumn after the harvest was completed. She is often portrayed as a younger woman and she's most common, her symbol is the bull. Which is the one that I managed to find a picture of is her riding the gray bull. And she was considered a benevolent goddess, goddess of the earth, fertility and the harvest. Uh, next slide, please. So now on to the last part of the presentation for the modern day. So there's a few things, and from what we'll be able to see from all the different cultures, and I know there's many other cultures that I didn't get to cover in this presentation, but some of the most common things that is key to worshiping an earth god or goddess was that the, the key needs still stayed the same, food, water, air, and shelter. And as they're all necessary elements to survive and were directly provided those elements gathered from the earth. So whether it was 
either from the caves or from the wood or whatever resources to build your shelter, the food, the water, and the air, all those gods and goddesses were worshipped in the fact that they were considered a key part of survival. Now, now, how can you make, how can you relate to it in modern day? So the big thing that we all know is for modern day, as far as how we can worship or how to honor earth gods and goddesses is it's in our intentions. So either in our words, our actions, and even if it's not one that we may do as a key part of it, we can all still take actions or at least respect the earth. So for example, some of the things that I mentioned is that such as focus of protection of our natural resources. So for example, working with the Green Man Alliances, whether it's doing like cleanups at the beaches or working on like local gardens, the planting, there's a lot of different options for that. As far as for other options that you can do, such as for an altar, just having different earth elements, whether it's the dirt or whatever is important to you. Because that's the key thing is that you would want to, depending on your intention, would make it what you'd have on there. So, for example, for my altar for Gaia, we have more of just like the statue of Gaia. We'll have the feathers. We've got a couple of gems and... Lots of birds. Yeah. And the birds and then... But it really depends on what your intention is. So you could use soil, you can do leaves, feather, or other elements that may have meaning to you and represent the god or goddess of your choice. And some other things you could do is like donate to charitable causes related to Earth, say a butterfly or bee garden, um, or even if you're doing just like petitions for like different ones that you're trying to see for saving the environment, or if there's different groups, or even just finding stuff that you can bring attention to that would positively impact the environment. All great things that you can do for the modern day. It's been uh, most of our worship of the mother goddess now is trying to curtail our greed right. using the resources. Once upon a time, trying we were their... all eking out, just eating was an all day work, you know, and so it made you more grateful to the earth goddess when you found a plant you could eat, you know. Now, and that doesn't kill you. Yeah, now you, you are trying not to throw too much away. Exactly. Like you think to yourself that, <clears throat> well, you know, aside from people's view on whether a goddess this or a goddess that, but in the sense of earth goddess, I guess, is what we're talking about here. Yeah, it, it helps one remember to stop back and think that it's for some occasion of the earth. This, this is your faith. And what does the earth and all of it entails, what does that mean to somebody? For some, it means, like you're saying, you want to keep be grateful for what you have and others it's like we don't want to take because much like the earth we want to be able to live in harmony and give and take with everything because this is the way that our earth works exactly and remember we only got one earth so right now we're at the point where now we're just trying to get the earth start to reverse some of our actions from the past yeah. how many years and trying to just bring back some of those natural resources because you look at it how many animals have been extinct now? And you look at the forest and stuff, right? And you can even see the effect on local areas where you can see the waterways. And what now you'll see is a lot more of those actions that would have had those natural barriers are now being taken down. So now once you get hit by yeah, hurricanes or other natural forces, what the natural barriers that we had before, now yeah, they're much... I think it's... Also important to remember Barry that, Barry yeah, exactly. The, 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 the concept that we are, I think, with the yeah, resurgence body. of the worship of the mother and acknowledgement of, if not, you know, God and goddess, Lord and lady, but then earth goddess in this particular sense, it has given us a sense of remembrance and to give us a chance to reflect, right? Because 
I mean, let's be honest, human beings as a nature itself, all we really do is once we've gotten the tools to move and as they become more advanced, we go to our place, we multiply, take all the resources and deplete it forever, then move on, move on. And now we are starting to recognize, hey, let's not do that. Let us try to live more in balance and not be a parasite because everybody lives on Earth. So, so true. The only problem I find is that <laughs> what I find is a problem, though, is that certain countries tend to really want to do the whole, you know, be green and all that stuff. And other countries are just like, yeah, we don't care. You know, and then how do you get that part where it's like everybody's just like, oh, go green, go green. I'm like, okay. America might want to go green, but what about that other country over there that doesn't want to go? It's either we all have to do it. Well, yeah. Oh, eventually they learn that we'll have to once those resources know, start to run out. They're we won't have learning. any choice. I mean, my, really. my problem is is that yeah, with that choice, it's like if but one action affects the other. It's like we. It's not like yes, you know, I could be, you know, going green and everything, but the person next to me doesn't go green, then eventually one's going to overlap the other and then where is that give and take you right know? and i and that, i get what you're, that's what it has to start it's it's got got to 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 can't start. wait for everybody else to yeah exactly. everyone's at the same place the important thing is just to be a leader yeah mm -hmm. the important thing is you know what you're doing and if mm -hmm. you can look at yourself in the morning and say i have done this at least the other person will come around rome wasn't built in a day we all know you're pushing that rock up instead of letting it tumble so the, the small steps keep our eyes on the prize and i, I get it it's annoying because you're trying really hard and like you hear on the news next day that they're destroying something it's like you guys be productive here because we yeah, just keep, keep keep trying you know it's like it's like you know you can see where certain countries want to go green and then there's other countries that are like okay i'm just gonna destroy everything in its front path and it's mm -hmm. like Okay, but what makes one country right and one country wrong? And then it's like, it, we are doing our part. Everyone then... has to live their own truth. truth. Unfortunately, they're not all the same. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. But again, change so happens happen. generationally. Yeah. 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 You know, we we have such short lives. Mm -hmm. You don't know two generations back, and you can't think about two generations forward. Mm -hmm. We have a very finite where we've got blinders on. And there's certain people that are working for their great, 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 great grandchildren, and others that are like, those are strangers to me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And in Native culture, in some tribes, we do the seventh generation mindset. What's mm -hmm. going to affect us seven generations from now? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That That is uh, that's the way that's such a higher vibration mm -hmm. that the mm -hmm. average person really is living. That's what, mm -hmm. I, I wasn't saying that that's necessarily how I feel. I'm just saying that. There's a lot of people out there that should take everybody, but you're not going to get everybody. No, so no, let's get as much as we can. <laughs> no, because I know there's a lot of people out there that are that are like, I'm only in it for me. Start with your own backyard. Yeah, I was going to say care what we can take care of. I mean, think about we, it. We feed the bees here. We yeah. feed the birds here, I mean, and and hopefully, you know, and all birds are welcome. I mean, <laughs> think about it. Except mine. Mine can say me. The the <laughs> concept <laughs> of popular the respect to Earth. Earth Day as a holiday was very, not too long ago, wasn't even unheard of. Like, the, the concept of Earth Day and respecting Earth is only fairly recent concept to America. Mm -hmm. And it took that long for Earth Day, Rome wasn't built in a day. Gradually. <laughs> so. Yeah, but then you think of it another way. It was 50 years ago. I if know. any of those hippies had invested in solar power, we would have been. You know, the time solar power was a dream. Oh, right. Old money is is industrial. It's what we pop, pop. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Old money is industrial. Mm -hmm. So, but it's changing little by little. The new technologies right. and the next, you know, next couple generations, they're going to have to get it together, or you can't. Yeah. There well, won't be any I mean, people. So many resources are finite anyway. You talk about you know old money. Burning coal got us so far. Yeah, went from no, coal we had to find because coal couldn't keep up. At this point, gasoline is no longer able to keep up. So there has to be something. 
So it looks no, like to move that way. Yeah. And yeah. each That's one tends to be a little better. Yeah. Right. Unless we believe it to be better than the one before. Mm -hmm. You never know. In 20 years, we find out then. what that caused. Yeah. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, the Stone Age didn't end because we ran out of rocks. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. Like the, it became <laughs> more efficient to use wood. <laughs> if it makes you feel any better, that Civilized. most of the civilized government <laughs> in the UN type of the level, they have like the environmental accord kind of thing. And they're like, they're. The vast majority of nations are signing that and trying to get together on some level to kind of say, we're going to try and clean. So there is... We're supposed to be totally electric automobiles by 2035. Yes. Well, that's, that's I, what's I, I hope I see the day. Tesla started that, the, the modern electric car, which right. just like a car just runs on batteries. And now there's... Seven major, I mean, big right, companies right. too that, there that will rivals be able us to afford one eventually. Yes, by 2035. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like the yeah. Ones are coming horrible. out this year and the last two years. Yeah, that so dirt bike on TV that is actually chargeable, it's completely electric. Nothing. Pretty big. interesting <laughs> how the major brands have now finally caught up with Tesla. Like, yeah. Well, they, now they're all smart. They, they, they've all they've they had. Tesla they 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 because he. Technology has been there all along. Mm -hmm. It's they're breaking away from oil. There's a yeah. big difference between the two. So it goes right back to coal. For a long time, nobody wanted to use gas because of coal. Most times, think about it, it's old money right now. Right. Oil money is old money. Like yes. old money does not like. Money. Usually, in science, it's, it's very billionaires are yes. It is, hydrogen there. fuel cell will be the next gas tank. It is not really a common it's thing for a lot of people in science who actually start no, scratching you point blank. So. Ninety percent of the science and advance is usually on the back of someone else's research. They've done enough, mm -hmm. and so what you're doing is these scientists are pushing it, pushing it, and getting information they already had and peer reviewed and everything, and moving it forward based on that. So things work. Well, they're getting <laughs> these things funded. Now yeah, yeah. Time, so that is. We'll anybody in the uh, Zoom world have an opinion? <laughs> What's going on out there? Yes. Well, I'm enjoying the conversation. Okay. <laughs> okay. Well, one thing that. about one about. thing about a lot of the goddesses with the cows, I thought uh -huh. it was very interesting because one of the goddesses that I particularly enjoyed, uh, Hathor, her symbol from ancient Egypt is a cow, and she was like the mother goddess. She ruled hearth and home, and it wasn't just Isis. A lot of people think it's just Isis, but it's not, because the Pantheon was huge, and Hathor was one of the revered goddesses of the home of the hearth of childbirth, and the cow provided. It had milk. It gave dairy. It fed people. It plowed the fields. It was like an all-purpose animal, and they even traveled on its back sometimes. Mm -hmm. I was also going to ask a question. Maybe um, there's people can find out more about this, right? So I noticed that in a lot of the portrayals of the earth goddesses, some of them that were riding steeds tended to be riding a masculine animal, aka the bull, as opposed to the, the cow kind of thing. And so I found that interesting how <laughs> it was. Can I ask this question? The, the Do you assume it's a bull because it has horns? No, because they were. It's a very serious question. There are cows have horns. There's a lot of there's a lot of steed type animals where the females have horns, but the perception is that horns are male dominance mm -hmm. because it's ooh here I am. <laughs> Not necessarily. Yeah. I mean, beyond the church, I'm just asking the question. Ask, no, 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 you're, not, you're, not, no, no, you're right, you're right, you're right. I'm not trying to say anything else. You're no, no, no. asking that. So, no. because why would yeah, if you're questioning, maybe it's not okay. Could be. It yeah. could just be because that's the visual interpretation of it. No, especially in a modern day. Yeah, you tend to think when you see the horns, you tend to think masculine. No, but she's right because mm -hmm. there are no. And believe me, you know me. I'm I'm cool with you. <laughs> yeah. So like, believe me, I'm <laughs> always waiting to fit. that so. What my perception might have been. Okay, I didn't think of it that way. So you're right. It very well could be for a variety of reasons. But you're right. It's like, yeah, why not, right? Because if I'm not mistaken, didn't Hathor have a crown with horns? Yeah. 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 Yes. Yeah. 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 Makes sense. So she's not she's not necessarily riding a bull. <laughs> Sometimes 
we tend to see ancient cultures through Puritan eyes. Yes, yes. yes. that's so what good. we know. You know, okay. like they you had know, no, which they, they, they had no perception of that. You know, like Anu could have been could have been the the horned animal, yeah, carrying Hathor across the sky. Yeah, it could be there's a thousand ways to interpret. Mm -hmm. I'd like it too. And, and just because the yeah. English translation says it's the bull, it could very well be yeah, yeah. cow. Or... So many times these things are translated into Latin or Greek, and it it becomes very by monks. My under yeah, by monks, but, <laughs> it, and that's a large part of it the because right. monks were men, and right. it was very male dominated. And yep. Therefore, but, everything must be. So. But see, that is happening. No, 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 no. But yeah, because initially, you know, comes that, that there has that whole male spin on it, like when you. A lot of the monks were rewriting a lot of the Norse stories. They had to kind of sprinkle in Christianity on some of this text. So it is masculine in that sense where they're writing it. It's going to have that masculine spin, right? But more along the lines that I think of what you're talking about, it got me thinking, right? So think of what we would consider LGBT, whatever, in history. Mm -hmm. In the past, they wouldn't know the words gay. They were like, they, they, they had no word for it. Person. They knew the thank you, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, oh, yeah. yeah. I mean, many times those people had names, but it became something else over yeah. time. So, mm -hmm. yeah. And yeah, it's exactly. like, and it's like the whole thought of, you know, if you think about with names too, you know, people were, you know, last names were not even a thing. No, they were a. a, a it was basically it was it was what you did. That's yeah. exactly right. It was what you did. Look like you, John Cracker. Or or where you lived. Yeah. You yeah know, where you lived. Like, like, like my like, like my so uh, maiden name. Or who owned you. Yes. Like, yeah, 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 absolutely. You know, my maiden name Warren is also what you would call a rabbit's den. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So if you think about it, and that can be such, and like if you think about it in a way where it's like, okay, then I would be Kimberly of uh, Warren because mm -hmm. I probably because probably someone in my ancestry line probably owned a Warren with rabbits, rabbits. in it, and yeah, yeah. you know, yeah. and rabbits very yeah. procreate. Yeah. Rabbit a lot. <laughs> rabbit, <laughs> rabbit, rabbit. No, you're a great food source. Okay. All right. <laughs> Any more questions or comments before we wrap it up tonight? This was very interesting. Thank you. Yes, very, very thank you. Very, very, very nice. Very nice. Good job. We're going to cover a couple cultures, but I wanted to at least cover like a little bit. You covered all of that. Maybe you forever. Yeah. Well, you covered some things that we were yeah. familiar to us, so it was very good. Yeah, very yeah, good. Yeah, I so think even that... you could go more into Asia and more of. Uh, oh yeah, you only went halfway around the world. Yeah, 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 I figured some of them would be more ones that would have been more specialized.